Hey there! Welcome back to Melanie Loves Death Metal. An actual death metal collection update today. I'm uh, gonna kind of just shoot this on the fly and I'll do some editing after um, of some clips. But the last hard, hardcore, the last grindcore video I did got a copyright strike, which I was waiting to happen. Uh, I figured that was gonna start happening as soon as I started integrating some music into it. Um, so I pretty much just like here you own this video uh, and just mute mute the music So if you watched my last video and you realize the last clip probably is muted. That's that's why so I'm gonna do my best now to pretty much only play some underground music on here things that I know are not gonna get me in trouble on YouTube um, And and try to evade the bigger name bands uh, that are on bigger labels that are owned by bigger label companies like UMG. Um, so yeah. Uh, so I've got a death metal collection update today. Um, one, two, three, four, five new vinyl that I've gotten in the last several weeks. I've been waiting to have time to record this because these are all, honestly, this could be my favorite uh, albums of the year list with the exception of, of a few that I don't have on vinyl yet because uh, they haven't been released or I just I've already showed them off in other other videos. Um, so you're going to see these again <laughs> in my year-end lists. Um, but this second half, this this end of the year for death metal has been phenomenal. Um, and it's been making me really happy. I've been listening to these albums nonstop, on repeat, not even a joke. This is all I've been listening to with the exception of a few that are not in this video because I've already either show them off or I don't have them on vinyl yet but yeah it's just really good stuff so I'll get started with the one that I think probably is the most hyped in this video uh, the one that will be absolutely no surprise let me just organize my shit here um, it'll be no surprise to you when it when I show it off um, but it's 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 you know it's that time of the year again for the new worm <laughs> Blue Nothing is now out on 20 bucks spin. Um, this is an EP this year, not a full length, um, but yeah. So even though it's an EP, it doesn't technically fall into the rules of a full length album that would necessarily be on an album of the year list for me, but I might break that rule this year and just crown this as my favorite album to come out. Uh, but we'll see. Um, I might just throw this in there as like a caveat to my year end to talk about it and show it off for the people just in case people that didn't watch this video. Um, so all right, what do you get with this this album? Um, what makes it so spectacular? Um, again, <laughs> this is now three three consecutive albums that Worm has released that has been just ultimately some of my most favorite music in my collection. Um, so first of all. Look at that phenomenal artwork by Brad Moore. Again, once again. Uh, so Gloom Lord came out, I don't know, back in 2019, 2020. And I absolutely loved that album. I loved the some of the black metal elements and the doomy elements into it. I, Worm was just really getting started then. Uh, and then Forever Glade came out, as you guys know, last year. And that just blew me away. I absolutely loved it. Um, it was my pretty much my album of the year last year. And... I, I was like, okay, I, this, this, yep, this is, this is, this is a, this is a real thing here. You know, like this band is phenomenal. Uh, Phantom Slaughter is an amazing artist, um, amazing musician. And he's collected some amazing musicians. Um, and this EP is pretty much an extension of Forever Blade uh, with a little bit more progression in there, a little bit more musicality in terms of guitar riffs and a little bit more of a black metal feel to it. Uh, so yeah, even though this is a death metal collection update, uh, there's still that deathy doomy, um, vibe in this album, but it's, it's taking Forever Glade and it's progressing more past that, um, which, you know, it's an EP. This is a massive poster of the album cover plus the, the very black metal, um, style of pictures here. I debated on just leaving this for a black metal update, but I was like, you know what? There's more death doom in this than there is black metal. There definitely is black metal style, stylistic music in this. Um, but for the most part, I just threw it in with the death metal collection update. Um, it's, it's a phenomenal record. Um, I listen to it all the time, <laughs> like repeat after repeat after repeat. This vinyl probably has seen the most time on my turntable this year. 
than any other record that I've gotten, uh, with the exception of about two or three of these records that I'm about to show too. They've been getting a lot of a lot of play time as well. Um, so yeah, I I I think it's just to the point now. <laughs> Where I fail to see that Worm is going to release anything that I don't like, um, I, I think they could release a jazz album at the end of this year as like a surprise. We're gonna do a jazz album, and I would be like, "Fuck yes, give me all the jazz that Worm can possibly do." That's obviously not going to happen. Uh, I think the only thing that could potentially make me not enjoy music that that Worm puts out is if they decided to just go full blown <laughs> new metal. Or something like that which obviously is not going to happen um so i'm gonna clip a very small very 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 small clip into this video um but this is everywhere it's a tony books fan there's tons of of uh pressings of it it's on cd it's on tape there's an amazing long sleeve of this album artwork which again brad moore nailed it with this i absolutely love this album um i really want that long sleeve uh, i've got several other warm long sleeves um but Inflation has changed the costs of 20 bucks bins uh, t-shirts, so it's like 40 bucks and I'm like, well, I'll wait on that for a minute, so. Happy Wednesday. Um, I'm recording this on right before I start work. So it's coffee. It's coffee. Coffee and death metal. How about that? Should I title that my, my video Coffee and Death Metal with Melanie Loves Death Metal? Um, all right. So the next record is one that I didn't expect to like as much as I did. Uh, I'll be honest with you. Um, I really liked their last album, which I'm pulling it up right now because I am really bad at, at names. I really liked their last al album that came out in 2020, which is hard to believe it was that that many years ago. Um, and I and I thought, you know, it was probably one of the best like technical style death metal albums uh, in my collection. So I was I was really, you know, it's like okay, you know, this I think this band is just only going to continue to go up. But again, it, it technical death metal is really like I really need to be in the mood for it. Um, it's a really a mood type of genre for me and so I wasn't I wasn't too like I wasn't too hyped up on this <clears throat> which I think is great you know I think hyping stuff up often ruins things for people uh so having just really no expectations for the most part I think helps in a lot of a lot of situations uh so I started to see a lot of traction on this on Instagram and people talking about it and some people sent it to me it's like have you heard this yet it's a great album so I finally I finally listened to it like the day or the, about a day before it was going to be fully released, but it was streaming, I think somewhere uh, like, I don't remember who was streaming it on YouTube. One of those sites, uh, was it death metal promotion. I don't remember. Um, so I listened to it and I was like, uh, yeah, this is a fantastic album. Um, and this is their best music that they released so far. And what I'm talking about, of course, is Faceless Burial. This is, what the hell is this called? At the Foothills of... Deloration, is that how you say that? Uh, this is their third full length album on Masako Un Ocho or MSUO, as people like to call it. Um, I don't know, did Dark Descent do something with this too? Because it says they're on Dark Descent, so I'm assuming it's either a CD or tape on Dark Descent, but MSUO pressed the vinyl. I actually got this through Dark Descent's website. I did not get this through MSUO because it was sold out on their site, but Dark Descent had some of these in stock a nice fluorescent orange vinyl right there um so i they must have been a, it must have been like a split collaboration i don't i'm not gonna act like i know what the hell i'm talking about right now um but it's a really nice msuo pressing if you're familiar with msuo a lot of their jackets are very glossy um and is this uh dan seagrave i think that looks like dan seagrave artwork let's find out uh, so similar to their last release, uh, Speciation, or spec, spe yeah, Speciation, is that what it was called? There's a, a bifold inner uh, sheet that's like kind of like a poster for the most part. There you go. It's just big for my camera. Um, 
So similar to the last Preston's, and Speciation was an amazing album. I really loved that album. I thought like, all right, this is their best one so far. Grotesque Miscreation was a great album too, but I, you know, I thought they're they're progressing and they're they're moving into um, an area that I really enjoyed within their music writing. Uh, cover painting Dan Seagrave. I was right. Okay. So yeah, this is a Dan Seagrave uh, album cover. So another classic and iconic death metal artist right there. Well, just an artist in general, not just death metal. Um, and yeah, so this album is, it's really good. And for me, like I said, techno death metal, I really have to be in the mood for. I, I haven't had to be in the mood for this album. Like I, I just, I pop it on. And I really enjoy it. It it is a little bit more on the. There's a little bit more progressiveness into it with longer style of songwriting, which they had longer style of songwriting than their last album too. Um, but just all around, really great guitar riffs, really great, almost like progressive death metal um, sections in here. Um, and I just really like you know where they went with this, with the type of style of music they're writing. They're still very much faceless burial. They still have that recipe from their last album on here, but they also have progressed their songwriting. And like I said, there's a little bit more of that progressiveness into it that I really enjoy, but that doesn't mean it's not technical death metal. It's still very a technical death metal style album. Um, it's fantastic. This is definitely one of the best albums to come out this year, hands down. Um, I was like, I'm really blown away by this. I like, like I said, I really loved their other albums. And I still listen to them quite a bit, but this one, I just, for whatever reason, didn't remember that they were coming out with a new album. And just, it was one of those things that kind of just crept up on me. So, uh, the band is out of Australia, if you're not familiar. Um, like I said, MSUO had, these were sold out, but I think there might be some plain black copies left. And then Dark Descent had the colored ones, and I grabbed a, a, a copy, so they still might have some. And I'm pretty sure there's a tape and a CD out there too, so check out Faceless Burial. Okay, um, I'm saving, uh, yeah, I'll save the last two for last because uh, right here, yeah, these are just some amazing death metal on this channel, uh, right now. On this episode, it's gonna be hard to create another one after this because these have just been some of my most favorite albums that have come out in the last several weeks and that's pretty much just... You know, it's a wrap for me in regards to death metal this year. I mean, there might be some stuff coming out in the next couple of weeks. I don't know. I, I, I haven't actively looked. But the next one I have is another MSUO slash Head Split Records uh, collaboration pressing. This is the new Morbific album. Um, what the hell was this called again? Scorn Beyond the Mortal Realm. Uh, Morbific is out of Finland. So the Finland boys. Uh, this is their second full-length album. Their first full-length was, was just out on... Head split. It came out. Actually, I have it right here. It came out. Was it 2020? This was their first album. Ominous Sleep Depravity. Um, I think this came out in 2021. It was relatively. It was like within the last year or two. Um, never heard of this band at all until Head Split started promoting them. And the thing about this band that I, I really want to just uh, call out there is what they do is so interesting and so different from every other death metal band that I'm used to listening to that's what makes them so much fun like and what I mean by that is this album is a great album but the style of recording of this album is is not polished and it sounds very much like an underground death metal demo uh, it's a very raw sounding album uh that's the best way i can describe it and for me i think that's what makes this band pretty fucking fantastic is that that's their sound it's not this overproduced over polished super like grandiose death metal record like i'm trying to think of a good example right now uh, maybe I shouldn't do a good example because I don't need to piss people off in this album or in this uh, <laughs> this video. But this is about as underground sounding as underground 
death metal chasing as you want to get in the old school death metal realm. I would pop, if, if you pop this on, if you had no idea what this album was, never heard of this band, put it on a turntable in a room full of death metal heads, they would be like, yo, what, what, what underground, what obscure death metal band is this from the 90s? Like, that's what you would <laughs> assume. I, I'm like, no, I, I fail to think anybody would think otherwise. Again, there will probably be somebody in the comments that will disagree with me. But, <laughs> hey, YouTube, how you fucking doing? Um, so, uh, this is the special Head Split Records edition, uh, whatever this is, Grey Marbled or whatever. But there was another MSUO pressing that was like this green swampy splatter one that looked so good. Um, but it sold out. I really wanted that one. But Head Split released this one, so I snagged it. I think it was only limited to 100 copies too so but there are other uh i think there's a tape and then possibly a cd some cool artwork right there some liner notes and then some lyrics up but this is a very like like 90s jam session record like they go through a pretty big uh jam like they just they just slay and just play on some of these songs and there's not a whole lot of vocals involved with it which it's just fun. It's a really, really fun album. Um, it's it's very stereotypical death metal in terms of the song names and shit. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's it's a really good album. These guys are pretty young too, from my understanding. So they've got a bright future ahead in the scene. Um, but yeah, it's it's just a really fantastic album. I I love it. It's it's a nice, refreshing. Um, you know, step back from the other stuff that's all kind of sounds similar. Um, and yeah, not to say the stuff that sounds similar is bad. Trust me, I listen to a lot of stuff that sounds similar and I, and I still love it. Uh, but yeah, really, really great album. Check it out. I think this may have, the vinyl might just be completely sold out. But there might be a black copy somewhere. But again, it's also on tape and CD. MSUO and then Head Split Records. Um, Morbific is great. Check out their first album too. And that's that's still around. That's still floating around. You can still find that. Um, Headsplit still has vinyls of that as well. So if you're looking for a vinyl of that, go over there. It was still available. But yeah. Morbific. Great album. <laughs> I am like, I've got some allergies or something going on here and I'm all congested in my nose and stuff. You probably can't tell, but I'm trying really hard not to go <laughs> into, the, <laughs> into the mic. So I'm sure, uh, I'm sure I just killed your ears right there. All right. Coffee is getting me through this vid video. Um, okay. So immediately I saved the last two for last um, because yes, Faceless Burial is fantastic, Morbific is fantastic, and of course Warm is fantastic, but these next two were the 100% did not expect to like them as much as I did. Just gonna call it out there. One of them, I had never even heard of this band. I saw, I got an early promo copy of it um, sent to my email, which I'm getting on these lists, which I, I'm not complaining. I think it's fantastic. And I was like, eh, I'll listen to this later. Um, not even gonna lie, I kind of shrugged it off. Um, and then I saw people kind of posting a little bit about it. And then one of the members of the band started following me on Instagram. Um, and I was like, okay, let me, let me give this a shot. And oh my God, this album is so goddamn good. Uh, and it just blew me away. And... I'm gonna just say this right now. I I honestly think like for for what I've been listening to and for the records I've just shown, this one is probably my favorite out of all of them so far. Like yes, I love Warm, but in terms of like full lengths, this one just has really captivated my heart, my little death metal heart. And this is Vacuous, I think is how you say their name, with uh, Dreams of Dysphoria, Dysphoria. Yeah, you know death metal uh, album cover great death metal album cover, death metal album names, what I meant to say. And this is another MSUO band, another um, Mesaka Un Ocho release. Um, so I don't know anything about this band. I had never heard of them. <laughs> I'm going to pull them up on the old uh, metal archives right here and figure out 
who is, is it vacuous or vaceous? How do you say this name? I think it's vacuous. I don't know. I'm probably saying it way wrong. Uh, the band is out of the UK and this is their first full length. The only thing that they have other than this is a demo, an EP, and then there's a live album that they released last year. This album is phenomenal. Uh, it is emotional. It is just, it is not like that cheesy style of death metal that just talks about like gutting up people horror themes. Like there's, there's a little bit more depth to this album. Um, Classic Black, uh, I don't know if there was another copy of this or pressing of this color. I think I got this through Meteor Gem because after I went and listened to this, of course I go and it's sold out. I can't find anywhere. Meteor Gem comes in clutch uh, and posts it like a day later. Hey, we got copies of this in stock. And I'm like, fuck yes, of course you did. God, I love you. So I ordered it as soon as I saw it. Um, I really like this album cover. It's just there's a little bit more simplicity to it with, with the way uh, it's drawn up here. And I don't know who the artist is, so I'm going to see if it's in the liner notes. Um, but here's a nice little cardboard inner sheet uh, of the band. And let's see here. Who is the cover? Luke Gilchrist. I don't know who Luke Gilchrist is, but I really like that album cover. So uh, the band is a five-piece. And I don't know if any of them are in anything else, uh, any other band. So let me just, let me pop over to the old metal archives and see members. Is, are they in anything else? Uh, the guitarist is in another band called Thundering Hooves, which I don't know. Oh, Hell Ripper. What the shit? Oh, I'm lying. Okay, so Max, the drummer, played on, with Hell Ripper Live. So that's the only uh, connection I can make there. But again, I never heard of this band. I didn't know anything about them. And just, it's it's an it's such a good album. Like there's there's a variance in the vocal style here that I really really enjoy. It's very like emotional, almost songwriting. Um, and basically, from what I understood, I believe the vocalist is is who is currently following me on Instagram. I'm probably wrong about that. Uh, but I saw that he posted like he wrote he pretty much poured his heart and soul into this this album. Um, and so yeah, it's a it it's phenomenal it's got a, a lot of you know that of course that death metal vibe but just the way that the vocal style is, is so different it's so catchy and they just write really great riffs and it's just it's a really good album um i just i fail to describe how great of an album is via words uh, so i'm hoping that people will go and listen to it um, but yeah, everyone that I've, I've said, Hey, check this band out. Listen to this. They've come back to me a couple days later. Like, wow, that's a really good album. This band needs more attraction. And I 100% agree. So I, hopefully they'll, they'll start to get a little bit more, more notice. And hopefully some of you listen to this and really, really enjoy it. So vacuous, 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 I don't know, whatever. Listen to them. And finally, the last thing I want to talk about today is another album that took me by surprise. I really enjoyed their first album that came out, um, whatever the hell it was called. We're gonna just, like I said, we're not really, um, prepared for this album. I just turned on the camera and recorded because I had the time and I didn't want to sit here and prep and lose time. Um, what was their last one? Through Wilderness. Uh, so yeah. A new Mortuous album, Upon Desolation. Uh, so this is on Carbonized Records. And I really, really liked their last album that came out in 2018. Which is hard to believe it came out that many years ago. Because uh, I still listen to it quite a bit. Um, they're a very, um, very old school sounding death metal band. Very much in that vein. A little bit of a deathy, doomy sound from here and there. Uh, and their first album was very good. They've, they've come out with several splits and comps since then. Uh, but this is their second full length. And I saw people just posting this and saying it's phenomenal. And Melanie, have you heard it yet? It's so good. Oh my God. Why haven't you talked about it yet? Blah, blah, blah. Well, I hadn't talked about it yet because I didn't fucking have it yet. Uh, it took a very long time to get to me. I did have it on order. Oh my God. I did not realize there was all this stuff in the jacket. 
I thought that I got it all out, but Carl and I just shoved a bunch of stuff in there too. Um, comes with a poster of the really cool album artwork, which I am probably going to take a poster down and hang this because I really like just the color is so pops and all that stuff. And then it is a gatefold. The artwork in the band, nice and shiny. There you go. And then it's got that like embossed, I don't know, that like stamped uh, logo right there. And then to top it off, the vinyl is really goddamn pretty. And I don't think it's sold out yet. So if you're looking for this particular variant, you're a muck. I'm pretty sure Carbonized Records still has it in stock. You have to search for it. They don't show it on their main website. But if you go and just search more to us, all the different uh, vinyl variants will pop up. And look at that. It just it goes so well with the album cover. It just looks so good. And it sounds really, really good, too. Um, so this album is really good <laughs> along with everything else i've talked about in this video like i said this might just be my year-end video i might just repost this but here you go these are my favorite death albums with the exception of like two or three that i don't have the vinyl for yet um it's it's a phenomenal record there's a lot of a lot of depth with this a little bit more longer style songs i mean there's some pretty long songs on here um one of them well not too long i mean they're like five between five and four minutes but there's, I mean, that's longish, you know, considering death metal can sometimes only be like three minute songs. Um, but, um, yeah, it's just a really good album. There's some really, really good, uh, riffs that are just repetitive and they get stuck in your head and they're just a very like, like dark and like you're in a fucking cave and you're about to get drugged through this cave. Uh, and just, it's a very just dark and eerie sounding record and it's just so good it reminds me of elements of ossuarium and a little bit of witch vomit in there here and there uh like there's a lot of a lot of really darkness like a very dark death metal album i keep saying dark i gotta stop saying that um but it's a really really good album again i fail to describe how good an album it is because i'm not a i'm not a good reviewer um but yeah it's it's such a good album. This this is four years in between their last. Um, critically acclaimed is a good way of saying it. Um, yeah, I, I just, I think you got to give it a chance. I really like their vocal style. It's more of that, like, drier sounding death metal vocal style. Um, and it's just got a very, kind of a doomier element to it, but not not too doomy. Definitely, it's definitely it's death metal. Um, and it's just, it's a really, really good album. Um Carve is a great song. Nothing is a great song. There is not a single song on this that I don't like. I will tell you that right now. Um, I think it ends really well. It's a fast listen. I'll give you that. It's only a 37 minute long album. After I just said the songs a little bit longer. I mean, they're a little bit longer. Um, but Ash and Dismay is, is fantastic. Like there's just so much about this album that's just so good. I don't, I just go listen to it. Let me know what you think. Um, because it's definitely worthy of your time. I, again, it crept up on me. I didn't expect to enjoy it as much as I did. Um, but yeah, so good. And this is their first one through Wilderness, which I talked about this. I think this is one of the first albums I ever showed off on this channel. If you go all the way back into the depths of my videos, one of the first uh, videos I ever made was on my cell phone. It was awful. Um, it was awful. I showed off the Through Wilderness uh, repress that I got through Tank Crimes because uh, that was a collaboration between Carbonized and Tank Crimes back then. And that album is so good. Like, I still really love that album. But this one is just four years later, they've come back and they've been like, hey, we're still here. We're still really fucking good. And we're going to write this second album that is just better than their first. No sophomore slump for this band whatsoever. So, more to us. Um, and I forgot to say where they're from and all that shit they're from california they're a u.s death metal band um like i said carbonized records i'm not sure about euro distribution guys sorry i don't really know what carbonized does with that or if they've pressed it uh through another euro distro but um check it out Bandcamp, all that stuff i know it's available and i will link everything in the description
that's it. That's all that I have for today for an actual death metal collection update. Um, I had planned to do reviews of every single one of those albums, like in-depth reviews with a little bit of song clips, and maybe I'll still do that. I don't know if I have time, but that's all I have. I'm going to try uh, and get some more videos out, but I just don't have the time right now. It's the holiday season. Yay. Uh, <laughs> but thank you guys for all the support, and I will see you in the next one.